Welcome everyone. We are delighted that we could make this uh, press conference happen today. We are really here to celebrate the uh, concept of public art and a piano, painted piano project that the Springfield Central Cultural District has put in three locations. This is our second year of the Springfield Central Cultural District's painted piano project. We are thrilled to be here today with Mayor Dominic Sarno, who's going to speak in a moment about the power of arts and culture in public spaces, and Mary Jenkins, who's the program manager for the Mass Cultural Council and oversees all of the uh, cultural district initiatives across the state. And of course, we have many of our cultural district representatives, including Katerie Walsh and a number of our other folks who are going to be here today to talk a little bit about the importance of having a cultural district in the city of Springfield. My name is Eileen McCaffrey. I'm the chair of the cultural district and I'm delighted to be here today. So let me turn it over first to our mayor who will speak uh, to you. And we just, on behalf of the cultural district, we are very lucky to have a mayor who's so willing to embrace the idea of art for all, public access to music, and, and murals and other things that are part of the Cultural District Initiative. So, without further ado, Mayor Sarno. Thank you very much. It's, it's a painted piano, not a painted lady. All the beautiful Victorian houses we have here in the city of Springfield. And I want to give uh, Eileen and Mary, and especially Eileen, a big shout out. She has done a tremendous, tremendous job at the Community Music School to reach out to all our kids, uh, diverse backgrounds, and allowing them to participate in music and entertainment. And they are very welcome in many of the city events uh, that we hold. So to Eileen, let's give her a big round of applause. Community Music School. City Councilor Katerie Walsh has been uh, my point person, the city's point person on the city council for our cultural district. To Mary Jenkins, and uh, please tell Anita Walker, uh, she is, always welcomed here uh, she's always dressed so GQ and she always comes bearing gifts but we see the combination my city team sees the combination with arts and culture not only vibrancy but it also translates to good to the bottom line of businesses and that's extremely important now last time and we're here at the beautifully redone Paul Picnelli Monarch Place uh, the uh, piazza, I call it, that's been done here. We are at uh, One Financial Plaza, and they roped me in. Thank God the uh, instructor, she was very patient to play the piano. Today you have a specialist that's going to play that piano. So we want to continue to do this because it makes you feel good. And it gets people to congregate together of all backgrounds, and they start talking. And music brings a smile to your face. So we see it as not only good for the arts and culture, we also see it uh, very vibrant for the economic development and a vibrant downtown and a vibrant city of uh, Springfield. And with that, Eileen, do I uh, turn it back to you? We'll have Mary speak and Councilor Walsh. Mary, let's put your hands together because we want them to keep coming back with the funds. Mary Jenkins. Thank you, Mayor. Um you know, a lot of this work doesn't happen without our municipal officials actually stepping up um, and the people that work for them. And Springfield has a long history of noodling how to use arts and culture as a community and economic development engine um, for this place. So that when it came to designating uh, Springfield Central as a cultural district, it was a, it was a really a no-brainer. Not only is there activity that happens inside buildings like the community music school, the theater, the museum here, um, but also um, importantly on the street. And it's recognized that you can participate in arts and culture whether or not you walk into a building or not, but you'll stumble into it whether or not you understand that that's what it is. You have festivals here, you have a lot of kind of different kinds of activity. And what, when it all comes together, it makes this place actually really special. There's nowhere else that this particular piano exists. What I think is really cool about this program is not just that the mayor took a piano lesson, is now well on his way to becoming a maestro, <laughs> but that this is an international program. This was first started in my home country of England, 
and it has gone it's international so right here in Springfield takes its place amongst international crowd of people who are playing pianos all over the world and I think that's quite something so I'm going to hand it back to Merson I want to thank you and we'll bring as much money as we possibly can. Thank you. She's got a good handshake. I'm going to stay out of back hand range of her. You know, she brings up England and London. This idea was first brought to me from Carol and Noel Leary. Carol's the president of Bay Path University who saw this when they traveled to England, London, England. And ironically, you had come to me uh, with this, and Anita, uh, Anita, I want to say Anita Baker, the wonderful singer, Anita Walker, about the piano program, and we embraced it uh, immediately. So we appreciate that. Again, City Council woman, uh, Katery Walsh, has been mine and the city's point person on the City Council, which we deeply appreciate that. So put your hands together for uh, my friends, Councilor Katery Walsh. Uh Thank you, Mayor Stano, and I definitely want to echo what uh, Eileen has to say and the other members of our board. We're so appreciative of your support and the support of all the city. But I think this is another great example of where else would you want to be but Springfield, Massachusetts. It's the happening place. And we have such a great partnership with the city, with our board, with the residents of the city of Springfield, and these people behind me should take a bow because they are always looking for ways of involving the city of Springfield, bringing joy and excitement to everybody in the city. I, it's been such a pleasure to serve on the board and to help get it going. And it's uh, actually, it's uh, one of my proudest accomplishments. So uh, keep me on the board, Dominic. Thank you very much. Kay Simpson's here from our wonderful museums. And I'm surprised the cat in the hat isn't trailing you there. But on behalf of the board, I'll have, and uh, Scott wears a couple hats for me with my planning economic development department. I'll have Scott say a few words on behalf of Port Scott Hans. Thank you, Mayor. So, I just want to say it's a privilege as a city employee to be sitting on the board of the Springfield Central Cultural District. And particularly want to thank Eileen for all the work that she has been putting into it uh, while we hire a director for uh, the district and for Mary and Anita for all that they bring uh, from the eastern part of the state uh, back to Springfield. So thank you. And it's a privilege to work with my fellow board members. Some, many of you are here. Um, it's people that don't have time in their schedule, but find time to uh, put into arts and culture for downtown Springfield. So thank you very much. excited to be part of the piano project this year. Uh, I've been on the board of the Springfield Central Cultural District since its inception and I've been very, very supportive of all of the activities that have been taking place downtown as a result of the Cultural District. But this year, for the first time, we were included. We have a piano, a painted piano, on the Loja, which is an open porch on our George Walter Vincent Smith Art Museum. So it is available to the public whenever we are open to the public, and it's been really exciting to see how many people have just enjoyed going up to the piano and playing it, and some of them are beginners, and others are really expert. So it's been a wonderful, wonderful experience. This is what I think is so great, that a lot of people have been trained to do something in the arts, but either, for whatever reason, gave it up at some point or another. So playing the piano, dancing, drawing, writing, sewing, all of that stuff is about being in the creative life. And I think what's fantastic is when you give people an opportunity, you put a piano on the street, something happens there. People will either come and play around with it and not actually play a tune, but occasionally you'll get somebody who sits down and it's true, something completely magical happens and takes people by surprise. And it's not the people who are playing over at Symphony Hall, it's just regular folks like you and I. Well, the fact is that our cultural organizations and artists are an economic engine in and of themselves. You, know, you think about the amount of people they draw to this city, and you think about the um, amount of people that they uh, employ, and you think about the goods and services they buy locally, then they, they are in of themselves a business, but they're styled somewhat differently as a non-profit business, which means that 
they can seek money to be able to get to do provide broader access for, for than everybody who lives here in Springfield. What I think is great here is that you have a business community and you have a, a municipality that really understands how that works and as a means of in, in, increasing vibrancy in this community literally by putting arts on the street that's what everyone seems to be working around and you know it, it makes people happy I mean the other thing about this is yes it's the economy but also it's about fun and cities need that you know in uh, particularly I think particularly today um, when oftentimes you get people moving to a place who don't necessarily know their neighbors we provide a great way for people to come together and gather and do things that are a little unexpected perhaps. No, we're just very proud of Springfield. I mean, you know, this is a city that's come a long way. It hasn't always had good times. So I'd like to think that the times are better for everybody here now and that if you come downtown, you can experience that for yourself and it doesn't have to cost a lot of money. You can do a lot of things for free. If you just sat here around this little parklet and just watch people play the piano, that's entertainment in and of itself. It doesn't cost a dime. Last time when Mayor Sarno agreed to try our piano lesson, we had a whole bunch of kids from the community music school who were so impressed that our mayor would put himself in a position to try something new. And so, Mayor Sarno, we don't say that you're not. We say you're brave enough to try, and that's what this is all about. So, exactly. So, thank you. I also wanted to point out a couple of things. We have concerts on these pianos. So, the locations of the pianos are here at Monarch Place, and we wanted to thank, um, we, we wanted to thank Monarch Place for hosting this piano. It's the first year that we've been able to do that here. We also have Kay Simpson from the museums. Kay is hosting a piano at the museums, which there's a concert here on Mondays at noon with a professional musician, on Wednesdays at one, and then the third location is 1350 Main Street at the Mass Live building. And that concert is on Friday. So come down and join us, and in between time, anyone can play. That's the joy of this project, is it's open for everyone to play. So. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the Springfield Central Cultural District and the City of First, the first cultural compact in the state, right, Mary? The signing between the Cultural District, the Cultural Council, and the City of Springfield, we're very proud of that. We want to say thank you very much for being here today to help us. And I want to recognize our one of our fabulous musicians, Joe Velez. Yay, Joe. So, so thank you all. Okay, that's it, I'm done. <laughs>